you take us back to the, the beginning? How did you discover your passion for storytelling? Oh, wow. Well, that going way back, I actually went to a school for the arts. It was, um, I, I was actually, I actually started as an artist. I was good at drawing and painting. And my, my teacher said, you should audition for what was uh, Canada's first school for the arts, Claude Watson. And it ended up being this full day of auditions where you had to excel at three out of the four arts. And, you know, I'm Asian, so I played the piano. <laughs> and um, so I managed to get in this school and all my friends uh, were drama majors and I was just really inspired by storytelling and, and just like being immersed in, into, into a story and a journey and being able to learn something from that. So um, that was like the very, very beginnings of it. And then, um, you know, after I went to the art school, my parents are like, okay, well, that was all fun and good. When are you gonna get serious? And I thought I would become a psychiatrist and um, I started actually counseling on a rape crisis line and also did some work with uh, women's shelters. And I found that, you know, there's, there's so much need there in, in terms of, you know, helping people. But at the same time, I really, I really miss the arts. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, you know, you can, you can talk to someone and you could try to counsel them and, 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 you know, but at the same time, it's, 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 it's very difficult. And what I realized is that, you know, when you have a story that someone can follow and be immersed in, sometimes it's just easier to get something across. And, you know, there's a lot of people who can be really closed off in their own lives, but they can sit in a dark movie theater and, and just bawl their eyes out because the story has impacted them and moved them. And so with that realization, you know, that one, you know, you can really affect someone and show them how to find their strength, how to, how to navigate a situation. Um, and then also, you know, film and television just allowed to have like a, a broader audience um, you know, to tell stories that mattered. And so that's really what drew me to writing and storytelling is to, to, to tell stories that were important and that would actually have an impact on people's lives. I mean, look at your career as a whole, who or what's had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? I think there's been a lot of influences along the way, um, for sure. And I, I think a lot of it has been the fact that there weren't a lot of you know, I started, I started my career as an actor and there weren't a lot of roles, right? There's not a lot of, of roles for Asians and, um, and women either. And, and so what it is, again, was telling stories that actually matter to me that I cared about and, and wanting to tell stories um, that, you know, just had some significance. And so I think it was, it was, yeah, wanting to, um, wanting to delve in and, and sort of change the narrative, um, you know, what's really exciting about the cleaning lady is is finally being able to put a lot of marginalized voices at the forefront of a show, and you know, really delve into those different perspectives that we haven't seen. And so that, you know, I think that was the um, one of the inspirations and one of the things that just like really drove me. And you've had a lot of success throughout your career. When you look back, is there a moment that stands out to you? Um, um, you, you know, I guess it was, there was this moment of, of, um, I was, um, I actually did, I worked for four seasons on, uh, the show called the hundred on the CW network, which is also produced by Warner brothers. And actually after the third season and the whole experience was, was fantastic. It was all about female empowerment, had a lot of really wonderful multi-dimensional female characters and leads. And, um, and so that was all a positive experience. But after the third year, my contract was up and the show wasn't, they weren't sure if they were gonna get renewed. So I went out for staffing and, um, and I was offered another job. So I went back to tell the showrunner of the hundred and, and he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like I, I want you back. And number two was like, well, we, we don't know if we're getting picked up. We can't, you know, we can't hold her. And so I was like, he's like, well, let me see what I can do. And, um, and, and so I had no idea what they were going to come up with. And then Warner Brothers called to offer a blind script deal to say, like, we want you back on the hundred if it comes back. And in the meantime, um, basically, they were going to give me a development deal. 
you know, as long as I said yes to coming back. So of course I said yes. And that was just, um, I mean, that was just amazing moment for me as a writer professionally, um, you you know, to, to have that being offered, like that they wanted to keep me on the show, that they respected me and my work. And, um, and then, and the Warner brothers wanted to continue to develop with me. So that was just an amazing, um, you know, I, I guess, step in my career that I, I've, I have so much gratitude for, for Warner Brothers, also Jason Rothenberg, who, who brought me on The 100 as well. Yeah, your new series, The Cleaning Lady, became Fox's highest rated new drama in two years, uh, which is a testament to all the hard work you put in, the cast, the crew, um, and also just the fact that the audiences want these types of stories. And many of your leads, and you talked about this a little bit earlier, have talked about the fact that roles and stories like this did not exist in the past. As a creative producer and writer, what has your experience been like in the industry? And what did you start noticing that shift? Um, I, I mean, I have been pitching a few different projects with Asian leads for a while now. And I have definitely noticed um, a shift. And like even... Um, back in, I think, 2014, I was pitching a project called Snakehead, um, which is inspired by a real life person, Sister Ping, who, um, you know, was, was a, a Chinese woman and she was born in communist China, completely uneducated, a mother of four, and she became the biggest immigrant smuggler in history. And she navigated the, the authorities um, or she, she ev- evaded the authorities for 20 years on six different continents. And I had Michelle Yeoh attached um, to lead. I had Oliver Stone attached to direct. And so that project got to script level, but didn't go further than that. And I think it was a little bit before its time. And so now a few years later, after the success of Crazy Rich Asians, I think that really broadened people's uh, you know, perspectives and to see, no, there is an appetite. There is there's an audience out there. Yeah. And so I, I do feel I, you know, with the cleaning lady that I, I struck at a, you know, at a, at a, at a time that things have been opened up and I got lucky really, because there's a lot of great stories. There's a lot of people who've been pitching great stories. And I, I feel really fortunate that um, I had the opportunity to, to create the cleaning lady in this climate. And I also have to give credit to Warner brothers because Initially, when um, I, I, I chose to adapt this project, um, what inspired me to, to adapt this particular project was that I wanted to create a show with an unexpected hero, which was all mm-hmm. about female empowerment and with the Southeast Asian lead. And they completely embraced that. Um, you know, it's never been done, especially on network television to have, you know, a Southeast Asian lead. And um, so I started developing, I I developed it for five months with Warner Brothers before we pitched it. And they actually said, you know, instead of pitching cable and streaming first, because broadcast, um, pitching broadcast, the season actually comes before, uh, you know, before they said, let's, let's pitch this to network because there is a greater appetite for diverse stories right now. And so I said, okay, well, I don't want to change too much about the actual story because, you know, this, there is so much about this that you know is is meaningful to me and so I didn't want to change too many elements but sure I'll pitch it to network and Fox is actually the first place that we pitched to and and they they picked it up. I want to talk to you a little bit about the casting process what was that process like because every character feels perfectly cast and what was that moment where you knew you found your Tony your Fiona? Um, Yeah it was I mean Casting it was a challenge for sure, um, be, you know, especially because there hasn't been a lot of, you know, Southeast Asian leads. And so, you know, that scares people when you're bringing on somebody who, who doesn't have that kind of experience. And so it was a journey in, in finding all, all of our actors. Um, and I will say like when, so when Fox picked up this show to pilot, two years ago, right before the pandemic, we were actually the first drama picked up by Fox. But they said to us, we recognize that we will probably have to find two relatively unknowns or just lesser known talents. And we are so excited for the opportunity to put new voices on screen. So they they recognized that it would be a challenge and embrace that challenge. And we actually did casting um, out of you know LA, New York, Toronto, Vancouver, Australia, the UK, 
And so we did, we did cast a wide net. And um, there were times where some people, not everyone, but there were some people like Dewey brought in it beyond Asian. And at, at that moment, I, you know, I just I was like, no, that's not happening. And so I actually did a deep dive into the internet saying, here's a bunch of you know, Asian and half Asian women that we still haven't seen. And Elodie actually was at the top of that list. So I sent that to casting, she auditioned and she just blew everyone away. Um, as you can see her, you know, she is so yeah. immensely talented. She is so authentic. She is so real. And she brings so much of herself to the role, which is this very, you know, intelligent, um, strong, resilient um, woman who just has so much inner strength. You know, she doesn't even have to say a word yet. She speaks so, so much. So when we found her, we knew she was the one. Um, and then for Martha, um, you know, we, you know, there's, we, we did a lot of casting as well. And Elodie was kind enough to offer to do chemistry reads with our final choices. And um, it was over Zoom. And we just saw this instant chemistry where they just, like they, they were, you know, uh, Elodie was in LA, Martha's in New York, they're on a Zoom, and yet they spoke to each other and we could feel we could feel this, this instant bond between them. And right after that, Elodie called all of us to say, it's Martha, right? It has to be Martha. I love Martha. It has to be Martha. And we're like, okay, we have to go through the process. We love her too. And of course, everyone fell in love with Martha and, and she is so fantastic. And, you know, I, I really love that this has really been a vehicle for, for both of them to shine. Yeah. Yeah, and and they definitely do that. And you you shared on social media how the cast and crew have come together to bring little nuances to their character that bring that authenticity across the screen. How did you create that environment on set where everybody felt open to collaborate? Oh, absolutely. Everyone has brought things, and even before we got to set, you know, we sat down with all of our character or all of our actors to talk about their characters. And um, Aiden Canto is another person who actually grew up on the border of, of Mexico and the U.S. And he would live in Mexico and go to school in, in the U.S. And it was easier at that time to, to cross the border. Um, but, you know, he'd never really been able to sink into a character that was from northern Mexico before. And so he really, you know, shared his experiences and, and what he brought to the table. And, and so it was it was definitely, a, you know, a discussion and, and trying to get him, you know, so that we were all on the same page mm -hmm. of who these characters are. Yeah, and what I really appreciate about the show that it highlights all these different cultures without calling attention to it or beating it over the head with it. Was that something that everybody involved with this project was really conscious about uh, heading into it? Absolutely. Um, I think we all were striving for the most authentic storytelling possible. Um, and, and so everyone embraced that. Um, and, you know, everyone embraced the fact that this was going to be a, a very diverse, very multicultural project. And, um, you know, I think one of the things that's important to me with that is, is to show like, you know, all these different people and immigrants from different cultures, different backgrounds. And really what that does is show that all people are more similar than they are different. You know, we all, uh, you know, it, it just is a way to get an audience to, have a greater understanding to all these diverse voices and to, to really have a compassion for the experiences that each of these characters have had. And that's why the diversity was so important is really to show we are, again, more, more, more similar than we are different. You know, we all have our hopes and dreams and, and fears and tragedies that we've, we've suffered and we all are trying to do our best for our families and do our best to survive and thrive. And, and, and so that's what I think is really connecting with people and audiences yeah. is that it is such a universal story that way. And I told you this during the junket, but there's so many intense moments within the series that are going to stay with viewers after they see it. For you, is there one in particular that you're really excited for audiences to see in the upcoming episodes? 
Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of really wonderful moments. Um, I, I, I one of the moments that I love is when um, Fiona had to tell Chris about his true upbringing, and 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 again, that was like a, a, a dialogue through a few episodes where she finally has to admit the truth. Um, so that's one storyline that um, that I actually wanted to tell right from the you know very origins of the story. Yeah. Um, was to show how how basically you know he grew up thinking that he had all the privileges of being an American, and realize you know and having that you know experience of all that being taken away from him, and how how does that feel and and you know how is he going to respond to that? So I think that's a storyline that um, that that I love and and um, I'm really happy to share. Um, there's also um, episode four. Um, when we deal with the bone marrow donor that mm -hmm. backed out, who is going to be played by Lou Diamond Phillips, who is incredible. And, you know, that's, that is another very important story where um, about 50% of people who sign up to be donors actually do back out because of circumstances, because, you know, they have to work or whatever it is, and they don't realize or they're not thinking about the person that they're affecting. And, and so that whole storyline was also really important to, to like, you know, how do, we, how do we convince this person who has turned a blind eye to other people to say, it's not my problem, which is what a lot of people do. You know, everyone's dealing with their own issues, their own problems, their own fears. And, and it's too easy to say, it's not my problem. Mm. So that's, that's, you know, a storyline that, you know, was to me very important to tackle. And um, episode five, um, we actually have, um, I mean, it's not going <laughs> to be much of a secret, but, you know, the whole thing about being undocumented is going to come yeah. to a head and, um, you know, there is going to be an ice raid that happens. And um, that's actually a, a story that um, I pitched out in the very early development of this project. Um, when I was working with Warner Brothers, it was around the time that these horrible, unprecedented ice raids were happening across the country. And it was so devastating, especially seeing the videos of these children who had their parents ripped away from them on their first day of school. And it was this absolute nightmare. Um, so at that point, I actually had, had pitched to Warner Brothers, like what about having an ice raid in the pilot? And after some discussion, we, we realized, no, it's better for our audience to get to know our characters and fall in love with them before we show mm -hmm. them what can happen. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's a very, that's a story that's very dear to my heart as well. Yeah. How much fun is it for you as a creator and writer to write these storylines, knowing that you have a cast that's so capable of tackling all of these timely and relevant themes and how much do they shape the story that we'll see in, in the future? Uh, it, it's it's so fantastic. Every Everyone in the cast, all the writers, uh, everyone is so invested and impassioned about telling these stories in the most accurate and authentic ways possible. And so, I mean, everyone is just bringing their all and everything we threw out these actors, you know, they, they just, they take, they embrace and, and they allow themselves to feel. And, you know, that's just, it's, it, it's, it, you know, it, it, it really warms my heart to be able to tell stories that are so important that can have so much impact and have a team of people who are, are, are right there too, wanting to tell the best stories and, and open their hearts so that audiences can open up their hearts and ultimately, hopefully become more empathetic and compassionate mm -hmm. to people who are actually facing these realities in real life. Yeah, you're in a unique position where you get to see the fan response in real time via social media. And I've seen the tweets of people feeling like they've actually feel seen on, on television now. What has that response meant to you? What how's that experience been like getting to see all of these like fans tweeting at you and all these articles that are being written about it? Uh, honestly, it it, um, it brings me to tears. <laughs> I, I gotta say. Um, you know, some people also direct message me and they tell me about their own personal stories and um, either their personal stories or their parents' stories. And there's, you know, so many people who have been touched by the show and it, it, it really 
it warms my heart. It fills me with so much gratitude, um, being able to actually put this story on screen so that it can reach a lot of people. And, um, and again, just, just build compassion all around. Uh, and I got one final question for you. If we're lucky enough to get a season two, is there a particular storyline or character that you're really excited to dive deeper into? Absolutely. I mean, all the characters, um, you know, we've only cracked the surface, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a lot of stories that we've been generating in the writer's room as well. And, um, you know, and then again, with with the kids like, you know, Chris and Jazz, we, we, we've we only touched the surface of their stories and what they're going to go through. Um, and, you know, there's there is so much more to tell. There's um, there's real story of empowerment. Um, you know, this is, again, just the beginning of Tony's character, and she is going to become, you know, from somebody who was disregarded and almost killed in the pilot um, and, and being somebody who, who was just pushed in the shadows and voiceless to become someone who is, you know, she has, she's been forced to navigate this criminal world. And then the question is, how is she going to end up on top? but you know but still maintain who she is so there is um, a part of her that is going to be navigating this sort of um you know these these moral landmines <laughs> and how is she going to able to hold on to her own moral center through it all mm. um and then at the same time fiona as well who is, is somebody who has now faced um her biggest fear and how that is going to empower her as well and, and to face the world differently. Um, so there's there's a lot of exciting stories to tell. And, and also, you know, with, with Armand's character, you know, one of the lovely things between the relationship between Tony and Armand is that they're both holding a mirror up to each other. Yeah. You know, Armand is, is someone as well who didn't necessarily want to choose a life of crime. Now he's in it. You know, now he's, you know, embraced a lot of the things that come with that, which is the power, the lifestyle, all of that. But he's still a good person at heart, and that's what Tony sees in him. Yeah, and and she's she's forcing him to make better choices as well. So they they are going to continue to impact each other and influence each other. And the same it can be said about Oliver Hudson's character of Garrett too. You know, he he's coming in, at, you know, as an FBI agent, but he's not always doing the right things. And again, like it's it's all shades of gray. There's no black and white. There's no good guys, bad guys, even though that's the way his character comes into it. And he, he himself is going to learn in this journey to see things differently and to also be influenced by Tony as well.